<laughs> oh, hello, hyperspace! My name is Devontos, and it's time to get hyped because this video is going to be a little different than the videos that I normally let out for you guys. This is actually going to just show you recommended classes for Infinite Warfare. Now, some of these classes aren't the classes that I use, but I tend to take very popular weaponry and I make a, well, a class setup for it. Now, I actually noticed the K-Bar is what we're starting on, and the K-Bar is a very, very popular assault rifle. It shoots really quick, it has the highest movement speed of all the assault rifles, so we're going to really take advantage of this, and we're going to start off with giving a suppressor. Even though the K-Bar is really weak, one of the weaker assault rifles, because it has such a fast fire rate, the suppressor wouldn't really hamper much of the damage or actually make much of a difference. The K-Bar has very low recoil, so we don't really need the grip, and we're gonna hop on some quick draw so you can snap onto targets at close range and finally stock. Just in case you engage a target that's a little further away, you can have the mobility advantage. So, the only thing you have to keep an eye on in this class is your ammo count. The K-Bar reloads a little slower than most of the other ARs, but because of the fast fire rate, you don't really need a secondary because the K-Bar is good at close quarters, hence the fast fire rate. So we're skipping secondaries, we're skipping lethals and tactical grenades, and we're going to go to the perks. Now, this is where it all comes into play. We're going to play very stealthy with this class. Very powerful weapon at close range, an assault rifle, so it's good at medium range, so you can kind of compete with most assault rifles and almost all submachine guns. We're going to have some ghosts, and we're going to have some blind eye. This allows you to be completely invisible off the radar from kill streaks and those UAV paint or anything else that enemies have me running. Run those two perks, get in close, get the job done, quick, clean, get out of there, and keep an eye on your ammo count. And of course we're running Scavenger because you're gonna be chewing through a lot of bullets, especially since you're up close and you're probably gonna find a lot of panicking enemies when they least expect you to pop up there. So finally now we're done with the assault rifles, let's move on to one of the most popular submachine guns. Oh wait, one more thing, you actually see at the very top we have 9 out of 10 of the pick 10 systems used, feel free to use that last slot on whatever you want, a red dot sight, Secondary, tactical, lethal grenade, whatever you want, whatever makes you feel comfortable. So, let's move on to the submachine guns. At the submachine guns, we have everybody's favorite, the ERAD. It is a very, very effective machine gun at all ranges. It has the least recoil, you can pretty much say no recoil at all. So for that, we are actually going to slap on a dot sight, either ELO sight or red dot sight. And I say this because the default ions on the ERAD isn't really the best for long range. And because this gun has no recoil, you can engage targets at long range. So we're going to slap on some red dot sight, some quick draw so you can have the edge on gunfights that are a little closer, and some laser sight so you can take out out targets that are very very close so you're going to be like an all-around fighter with this submachine gun we're going to slap on a bazooka because nobody nowadays targets kill streaks so we're going to snap on a bazooka so you can take out those uh uavs county uavs even those wardens if you have to we're going to slap on the tar grenade now the reason i say the tar grenade is because you're going to be very mobile with this class so you can t quickly take out your tar throw it wherever you want and continue moving and probably stick an enemy or get a kill and finally we're running uh what was that grenade called i have it here it's called the black Ops grenade there we go we have the blackout grenade you can use this to breach you know black them out breach hip fire with the laser sight and get your kills and finally for the perks we are running blind eye that we won't be able to see be seen by those wardens we are going to be running scavenger because the e-red eats up ammo like no tomorrow and finally we are running gung-ho which will actually come into pair with the laser sight and this is a very very effective e-red class i know a lot of people use their e-rads and they stay very campy with it this is an e-red that is very mobile and it is insanely effective and it is very very powerful so let's move on to the next category the lmg so the LMGs is actually really interesting. Depending on the rig you have can determine on how you play your LMG. Now for the video we're going to focus on guys who aren't that great with LMGs like Snapdick or the Warfighter. But if you're using somebody like Merc, you can actually take, let's say, the Titan and treat your LMG like if it was an assault rifle or even a submachine gun. But for the video, let's treat LMGs like LMGs. So let's say you're running Snapdick or, or maybe Striker or something. You want to slap on the raw because LMGs, I feel like they're better used for holding down the fort. So for that, the raw gets the job done. Very powerful, very slow shooting, which means you can target a lot of people and take them out quickly. So we're gonna have some red dot sight because the default ions on this gun is terrible. We're gonna have some quick draw because quick draw works very well with LMGs. And finally, we're gonna have some grip because the raw kind of struggles with targets at long range. Slap on that grip and you can put up a fight. We're gonna have the Oni submachine, I mean machine pistol, the Oni machine pistol, because I feel like it's the best machine pistol if you want to actually get out in the field, because obviously there are some times where the LMG isn't gonna cut it if you're out in the field. So switch out to the Oni and get your job done. 
And finally, we're gonna have some trip wires. If you're holding down the fort, you wanna be campy, so use them trip wires and camp! And we're gonna have some dome shields. A dome shield comes into play if you're actually playing game modes like Domination, or you wanna support your team a little bit, throw down the dome on an objective, capture the objective, and then retreat and get back in position. And finally, for the perks, we're gonna be running perks that turn you into a juggernaut. Blast shield, attack resist, hardwired, make you immune to any form of damage, and it allows you to stay there much longer. And next, we're gonna check out the shotguns. Now, shotguns are really interesting, depending on the- Shotguns are really interesting, the, the turn- uh, I can't talk. Shotguns are really interesting, depending on the shotgun you like to use. There we are! Let's get into this! There are two types of shotguns, slow shooting pump action and fastest shooting semi-auto or full auto shotguns. We're actually gonna look at both. Let's start off with the pump action, the slowest shooting kind. Now, one thing with shotguns you really want to do is extend that range, and with the Banshee, that's basically all you need to do, at least when I use the Banshee. A lot of people use the other last shotgun, I forgot what it was called, the TAC-12, I think it was? But either way, you just want to extend the range, so you don't put any attachments, no red dot sights, because nobody ADSs with shotguns, and if you do, it's only for close range. You don't need a dot sight for close range. You're gonna have to have uh, anything to extend the range. Slap that on the Banshee, moving on to a secondary, I tend to use bazookas, obviously for the long range engagements, and I feel like this bazooka, whatever that name is, like I keep forgetting the name of the bazooka, but that one is perfect for them long range engagements, kind of like a mini sniper. For the lethals and tacticals, you're going to use any kind of grenade that you can use to flush them out. For the tactical, I tend to use smoke screen, so I can use it to breach. I feel like shotguns are very effective for breaching. For the perks, we're going to be running ghost and blind eye again, so you can quickly run around the map unseen, breach, get your kills, get out. We're going to be running momentum. Now the reason I say this is because with shotguns you don't really jump that much unless you're actually engaged in a fight, so with momentum you can actually get to your destination faster. And finally gung-ho, which comes into play with hip firing, which is what shotguns are used for. So finally we're moving on to the fastest shooting semi-auto of full auto shotguns. Here we go. Oh yes, here we go! So either if it's semi-auto or full-auto, either way they both shoot really fast, so you're gonna treat them differently. Again, you wanna always focus on extending your range, you wanna have more ammo, because it's a shotgun and you're gonna be spamming them bullets, the more ammo, the better. And finally, you wanna slap on that laser sight. Most full-auto or fast-shooting shotguns tend to be more inaccurate than pump action, so slap on that laser sight and help you out. We're skipping the secondary. Because we're skipping the secondary, we actually have more space for more equipment to help you out in the field. Again, the tar grenade, same way we can use it like the submachine guns. Throw it in the fight, get a kill or two. The tactical grenade, I feel like this little injection thing that boosts your health is kind of optional. You can put either a secondary or you can have any other tactical you want. I just put that there because I didn't really know what to put. I don't really use uh, tactical grenades when I run my shotguns. And then finally for the perks, we're running blind eye so you can freely move around even if they have wardens up or any other kill streak. We're running scavenger because your shotgun shoots really quickly. You're going to be chewing through a lot of ammo, so you have to run scavenger. And finally, gung ho for the same purpose as the last shotgun. Now, sniper rifles. They're actually two ways to use sniper rifles, so let's talk about the snipers! Everybody has a favorite sniper, for me it's the Widowmaker, but regardless you can use every sniper one of two ways. You can be the speedy quick scoper, or you can be the stationary stealthy sniper. This is the setup for that stationary stealthy sniper. You actually want to have that variable zoom because you never know how far or close your target's gonna be. You want to have that ballistic CPU because most snipers tend to sway a lot. I noticed the Widowmaker doesn't sway too much, but it can still come into play if you want to engage targets that are really, really far. And finally, quick draw in case you gotta slip in a quick, quick scope here and there. Again, the Oni machine pistol because it's very good for close range and it's kind of like a pocket submachine gun. You want to have some trip mines so you can, well, hold the fort if you're trying to snipe like an old school campy sniper. You want to have anything to alert you if enemies are closer. So you can have another trip mine, you can have some kind of proximity tactical grenade, anything that can help you identify enemy locations or when they're closing in. Finally, for the perks, you want to use everything to keep you hidden, from ghost to blind eye to cold-blooded, and I don't think marksman is a really good attachment, especially in Infinite Warfare when the maps are really tiny, but if you're a hardcore sniper and you want to play like the old-school snipers, marksman is the perk to use, 
Yeah, marksman's a perk to use. And finally, if you actually want to go quick scoping, it's basically the same setup. You still want to use the variable zoom because, again, you never know how far your target's going to have to be if you have to quick scope. And when I quick scope, I tend to keep it on the first zoom level, so it's not really zooming in too much, just in case I have to engage targets who are like right in front of me. And then for your perks, you want to use something that just speeds up your sniping. So you want to have something like momentum. You want to have something like a uh, what was it, gung ho? And what was over overkill? Was it? It was the one that makes you reload faster. But think of it like speed sniping if you're trying to quick scope. And that's basically about it. Now for the bonus, I can show you guys my preferred payload and my favorite assault rifle setup. I keep saying payload is rig, but anyway, here is my favorite rig, Snaptic! I actually got that black Snaptic uniform from the Wraiths, and I like the equalizer and that propulsion. I feel like the propulsion is really, really useful, especially if I pair it with my favorite assault rifle, which is this! The Type 2, and this is my favorite assault rifle class. You guys can try it out, and it works really well with Snaptic. Basically, just treat the assault rifle mode like a regular assault rifle, and when you go into close quarters, like inside buildings and like that, just split it in two, and then, well, use it like a submachine gun or dual wield shotguns, whatever variant you have. And it's really, really effective for Snaptic. So, if you like this video, punch that like button with a mighty force. Let me know in the comment section below if you actually want to see my loadouts for Modern Warfare Remastered. You can follow me up on Twitter, at Devontos Man, and as always, I'll see all of you in the next video. Have a nice day!